Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome to the stage, you've seen him on Jay Leno, you've seen him on Jimmy Kimmel, you've seen him all over the television. I want you to stand up and put your hands together for Michael Jr. Thank you so much. Well, why y'all stop clapping? I don't understand what this <laughs> I'm just glad So we're gonna have some fun. Um, my name is Michael Jr. I'm gonna do some jokes. <laughs> um, but they're not gonna start right away though. I just wanna point that out. So, um, cause for me, comedy is like, it's like dating somebody that you really, really like, you know? Um, and I don't wanna rush this, you know? I used to do that. I used to come up on stage. I would do a joke right away, jump right in, you know, but, but I got hurt, man, so, you know. <laughs> and let's be honest, right? I'm sure you've seen a lot of comedians in your day. You know, I know I've had my share of audiences, you know. <laughs> but it didn't last. <laughs> so I just, I want this to be different, so. <laughs> hey, we doing comedy at a church. Like, like, how's this gonna work out, really? I mean, some people are like, I just came to see this thing explode. <laughs> What's so amazing about doing comedy at church, when I was a kid, laughing at church was illegal. You couldn't laugh at church. I remember one time laughing at church because this lady was jumping around and her wig fell off. So, <laughs> That stuff was funny. Her wig fell off and then my I laughed, my grandmother would pinch and twist. I can understand a pinch. You gonna twist? That's the devil. <laughs> Church was the worst. Oh my goodness. Church lasts like six hours. Dude on stage is mad at everybody. I can't figure out why he's so angry. Seven years old, I figured out why he was so angry. He was angry because he had some phlegm caught in his throat. So at the end of every sentence, he tried to get it out. He'd be like, the Lord said, ha! <laughs> Act like you <laughs> I'm like, Grandma, he need to gargle, Grandma. <laughs> I'm seven years old, man. Church lasts six hours, too. Then we go in the basement to eat a sandwich and come back up. I'm like, what was that, a halftime or something? Actually, I'm gonna be real with you. There's enough black people here. It was always chicken. Why we always gotta eat chicken? Every single time. I know, I, I had to tell them. I'm sorry, it was, we at church, you know? And tuna. At the end of church, they would ask us, I was like, so you wanna go, after this, we all gonna go to the sister church. I don't even like the brother church. <laughs> One time I get to church, seven years old, there's a dead body in the front. It's a funeral. Nobody explains that to a seven-year-old Michael Jr. I'm thinking that's how they roll. <laughs> like every three weeks or so, they bring a dead body in <laughs> as an example or something. And the dude on stage yell at everybody in the audience like they the ones that did it. <laughs> I remember I asked my grandmother, I'm looking for some explanation. I'm like, Grandma, what happened to the man in the box? What happened to the man in the box? Her whole explanation was, he in a better place. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of box did he live in before? Dude on stage said he went to see the king. That was his whole explanation. He went to see the king. Ha! <laughs> I don't understand what that meant. They didn't even call the kids' choir to sing. I was in the kids' choir, not because I wanted to be in the kids' choir. I was in the kids' choir because I was a kid. <laughs> and it was a requirement. And what song we got to sing? Soon and very soon, 
We are gonna see the king. I don't want to see the king. I don't want to see the king. You ever go to a funeral and people are always talking about the person in the box like they sure he going to heaven? And then they tell you, that they, and then the people get up there, they always talking about him. And the last thing you know, like the dude stabbed three people when he never prayed one time in his life. And all of a sudden, everybody, like, he's going to heaven. He's like, I'm sure Uncle John is looking down at me right now, and he's a little tear is going down his eye. I'm like, he's probably looking up at you right now. <laughs> that's, a, that's a sweat bead is what it is, a sweat bead rolling over. I just made that up right now. I just made that up. <laughs> even as a kid, growing up, we were poor. We weren't even poor, we were po. <laughs> we couldn't afford the other letters, man. <laughs> we had no money. I was actually being sponsored by a family from Haiti. When you're poor, your creativity excels. Like it really, really excels. I remember I wanted an action figure when I was 10 years old. I wanted an action figure so bad. My birthday came along, my dad hands me a box. I open it up, it's empty. He said, it's Invisible Man. I was like, that is awesome! I played with that thing for like three weeks, man. So my brother hid it from me. <laughs> Couldn't find it nowhere, man. I knew he took it. We played games. We just made up games. We played this one game called uh, Talk About You. The instructions were to just talk about you. That's all we did. We talked about each other. My friends would talk about me. and be like, Michael Jr., you got some big feet. And I was good at this game. I was like, oh, yeah, well, you're so dark-skinned. I bet if you ride a motorcycle, you get a ticket for tenant windows. <laughs> it's hilarious. White people are looking for black people to make sure they can laugh. It's just okay. Man. <laughs> it's okay? You sure? No? Mm. We had no money, man. We had to, my parents would buy us some stuff, but they couldn't pay for everything. Like, we had the game Operation, right? We ain't had no batteries. <laughs> then my cousin came over, and he figured out a way how to plug it into the wall, right? <laughs> it's a whole nother game now, man. <laughs> whole nother game, man. The Operation Roulette is what we called it. It was Operation Roulette, man. Just play one time. We played one time. I was like, nah, I don't want to play. I don't want to play. He's like, it ain't my turn. Somebody else better go. It ain't my turn. I ain't going. Actually, you know what? Um, I made that up. We weren't poor when I was a kid. I just said that because some jokes are funnier. Some jokes are funnier from a poor perspective. I'm going to prove it right now. You always... Here's a great example. I'm gonna tell you the exact same joke from a prosperous perspective. Watch what happens. When I was a kid, my parents bought us the game Operation, um, and we played it. So. <laughs> it's not as funny, is it? Yeah. It's better if I was poor, so. We're excited, me and my wife just had a new baby. Had a new baby, yeah. Yeah, they, well, that's how they come. It's new. <laughs> My wife wanted to go to the prenatal classes, right? And I'm like, why well, I gotta go to class? You pregnant, I pass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like a teacher class or something. I don't know what you want me to do. But I went to the class because I love my wife, right? And I'm afraid that they're gonna play the video. I don't wanna watch the video. I'm looking for Bible verses against the video. 
And then the doctor tries to throw in perks. The doctor is like, so listen, um, during birth, would you like to catch the baby? <laughs> catch the baby doing what? What are you talking about? <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. If you want to, you can catch the baby. I'm like, isn't that your job to catch the baby? Do I get a discount if I catch the baby? What are you going to be doing while I'm catching the baby? You went to school to catch the baby. I do comedy. I shouldn't be catching the baby. Anybody here ever caught the baby before? Anybody ever caught the baby? Anybody dropped the baby? Anybody dropped the baby? I asked that question one time. A lady raised her hand. I'm like, you caught your own baby? What does that look like? <laughs> I'm not sure why I growl when I tell that story. It's weird, because I can't even tell the story without growling. Well, I'm going to try it again. Like it, like it happened every time. I don't understand it. And ultrasounds come in color now. Did you know that? Which is ridiculous. I know it's a black baby. <laughs> it better be a black baby. Yo, what if you didn't know your baby's nationality until you got an ultrasound? That would change a lot, right? Conversations would change, right? You'd be like, so what do you want? What do you guys want? You're like, well, um, we were kind of hoping for, you know, maybe a Native American, you know? <laughs> you know, college is so expensive, you know? We just wanted to... And now we just, with the new baby, we're to the point now where she sleeps through the night, which is great, because I was so tired of getting up at like three in the morning to wake up my wife. <laughs> no, I'll get up with the baby. I always get up with the baby, and I would take care of the baby and make sure she had all her stuff. And I also would talk to her about how much I love her mom and how beautiful her mom is, because I think it's important that a child feel that security. You know what I'm saying? Plus, you know, the baby monitor was on, so. <laughs> yeah, women love babies. Whenever I'm somewhere with my daughter, whenever I'm so, people just, women see her and they just go, oh. And they'll say anything in their mind, anything at all, it just comes out. Look at the baby. She is so beautiful. I could just hug her, I could just take her, look at her cheeks. Men don't have this reaction. And it's a good thing, too. This something don't go wrong in our minds when we see babies. You know what we do like? We like other women. That's what we like. That's what we find cute. But that would be weird if the same thing happened, right? You see a dude, he with his girl, you're like, yo, what's up, man? How you doing? <gasps> Look at her. Wow. Hey, um, could I hold her? Could I hold her? No, no. Okay, okay. Wow. Wow, is this, this the only one you got? You got any more? You know? It's awesome, man. If you ever need somebody to stay with her, man, let me know, man. Wow, it's so beautiful. That is hilarious. You could tell a black woman's laugh. You ever notice it always ends with whoo? There'd be a fan involved somewhere, too, a homemade fan. Just as a note, this fan right here that some people use, actually takes more energy. Therefore, you're building up a sweat. So just cut your losses. My older daughter asked me to buy her some Toms. She wants some Tom shoes, and I was like, well, are you to the point now where you need to chip in at least something, 10%, you gotta do something. She's like, Dad, what you don't understand is whenever you buy a pair of Toms, a needy child gets a second pair for free. I was like, well, you need to sign up for the second pair. Then. Mm. <laughs> I 
Me and my wife decided to try to homeschool. Yeah, yeah, homeschool. Yeah, that's... But we found out that when you homeschool, they don't leave. <laughs> Did you know that? Like, they were still there. So then we found out the family down the street, they actually homeschool, and they've been doing it for a while, and they're really good at it. So we're going to see if we can get our kids to transfer to their homeschool. <laughs> I had a friend that was homeschooled when we were kids, man. He got kicked out of homeschool. That was weird. <laughs> he got kicked out of homeschool. Parents, you ever want to have to talk with your teenagers? Because teenagers can be a little bit of work. You ever want to have to talk with them? You ever want to break up with them? <laughs> you ever want to sit them down and be like, listen, I think we should just be friends. <laughs> it's not working out. It's just not working. We are fooling ourselves. No, 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 no. It's not like, no, no, no. We're not seeing any other kids. We're not ready. But if you want to see some other parents, that's just fine. Yeah? We just, if you could just give us our stuff back, that'd be cool. We call it even. You know what I'm just... I was at the mall the other day, right? Because that's where comedians go to change the subject. I'm at the mall, and this, this dude has on a shirt that said, if you don't speak English, leave the country. But it was written in English. So I walked up to him, and I said, you're dumb. Well, I said it in Spanish. So. Then when you're at the mall, you always see the girls. The girls be wearing the skinny jeans. You see the girls in the skinny jeans. Skinny jeans. Read the instructions, you know. Um. Yeah. Supposed to be skinny to wear these jeans. Yeah, that's going to help out. <laughs> they're not called muffin top jeans. That's not what they are. They're not. Did I just hear somebody say, that's funny? Let me see if I got this right. Instead of actually laughing, you just gonna announce your reaction? That's how you wanna do it? That's like driving down the street and you get cut off in traffic and you're just like, <gasps> the horn. Wait, I got another one, I got another one, I got another one. You get a speck of dust in your eye, you just stand there and say, blink, 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 You ever be at the mall, you see the dude with the white tank top shirt on, like a muscle shirt, right? I mean, he don't got no muscles. You're like, what is that, a wife threatener? When was the last time you guys gave somebody the lizard look face? The lizard look face. Everyone in here has done it before. You just didn't name it. Michael Jr. had to name it, so now you know what it is. Have you ever made eye contact with somebody for a little longer than you wanted to? You didn't do it on purpose. It just kind of happened. Now you got to fix things. You don't want them thinking that you think of something you ain't thinking. So now you got to do something to rectify the situation. The truth is, you don't got to do anything at all. It naturally happens. You make the lizard look face. Let me give you an example. You're walking along, you make eye contact. Everybody does it. I don't care what nationality you are, we all do it. You can't even not do it. I dare you, when you leave here, try to make eye contact with somebody for more than three seconds that you don't know. You're gonna be struggling, you're like, mm. <laughs> 
When I first started doing comedy, I had a guy ask me a question on an airplane. The guy was like, wow, you do comedy, huh? So when will you know that you're a professional? That's what he asked me. When will you know that you're a professional? I was like, wow. I never thought about that before, because like a doctor gets a, a plaque, you can practice medicine, an attorney passes the bar, officer gets a gun. How do you know when you're a professional as a comedian? So I told him, after I get a certain amount of money for one show, that's when I'm a professional. Then I got the money and I was like, doesn't feel like I'm a professional yet. Fast forward some years later, I'm doing a, I'm doing a show at a comedy club in the South. And I get heckled from this guy in the back of the room with more twang than I can explain. <laughs> you ever hear somebody with so much twang it sounds like they speak in banjo? You just talk to him, hey man, how you what you gonna do? You gonna go around that gun burn down down burn down down burn down burn down burn down 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 burn down 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 you stop your foot starts stumping, you're like, what is going on? How come I can't control this? So the dude heckles me from the back of the room and he says this, Micah Jr., I was wondering, why do all black people look alike? Right? And the whole crowd froze. It's an all-white audience. They didn't know how I was going to respond or what I was going to do. They had no idea. I didn't know how I was going to respond or what I was going to do. They didn't know if I was going to throw a chair, get mad. They had no idea. When I said these words, I didn't even think them. When I said them, I was hearing them for the first time. <laughs> he said, Micah Jr., why do all black people look alike? I was like, we don't all look alike. You just got to cut the eye holes in your sheet a lot bigger. And that's when I knew I was a professional. <laughs> What's your name, sir? What is it? Andy. Andy. Cool. Ed. You just changed it. It's awesome. <laughs> um, that's a cool name. Your name's Ed. That's the name that travels. Now, some names travel, some names don't travel. Like Ed, you can be a black Ed or a white Ed. Your name travels. Some names don't travel. Like a name that doesn't travel? Anybody know a black Becky? It don't travel, do it. It don't travel. It don't travel. Anybody know a white Shaquifa? Mm, no, no. Doesn't travel. Doesn't travel. Ed travels. What do you do for a living, Ed? I'm going to need, let me turn the volume up real quick. Go ahead, say it again. Oh, that's great. She's got a mic for you. That's awesome. That was cool. What, what do you do? Uh, I, I do websites. You do websites? Yeah, we all do. It's called Click. <laughs> Click. It's awesome. Ed's unemployed, everyone. So. Yeah, I get paid pretty good for this boy. What's that? I get paid pretty good for this toy. <laughs> cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Can we get a little humility up front, please? Can we get a little? <laughs> no, just... All right, cool. So let's say you're at work building websites, right? What does your workspace look like? Is there a bed somewhere in there? <laughs> no, you actually go to an office. So at some point throughout your day, I'm just using it as a segue to get to my favorite part of the show. That's all I'm doing. Okay. At some point throughout your day, do you get to take a break? Yes. Exactly. I've been standing up here for like 30 minutes. Now I'm on break. <laughs> Let me explain to you about Michael Jr.'s break time. My job is to do stand-up comedy. Now I'm on break. <laughs> it's kind of like imagine if you were a janitor or something, right, and somebody spilled something on the ground. You could clean it up, but you don't have to because you won't break. <laughs> Same thing here, man. Something funny might happen, but I ain't trying. School looking people. What's your name? What's, we actually have a mic already. That's awesome. What's your name? Melanie. Melanie. Cool. Travels. <laughs> it does travel. We all know a black she Melanie. Well, at least I do. <laughs> what do you do, Melanie? Um, I actually work here. You work here? Uh, let's use somebody else because this will look staged. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It's awesome. Hey, let's go uh, three down to the end. Let's go to the end. The pretty lady in the white. Let's talk to her real quick on break time. She's cute. She got dimples. I love dimples on women. It's so cute. Only in the front. Let me say that, though. Break time, whatever. <laughs> What's your name? Julie. Julie travels. What do you do, Julie? I stay at home with my kids. Well, did you just lose your job tonight or something? I'm not sure. <laughs> She's like, I stay at home. Well, okay. You just broke out. Awesome. I just talked to somebody else. What's, what's your name? Pretty lady. What's your name? You got, yeah, right here with the dimples. Are you, what's going on right? What's going on? Sue. Sue. Cool. What's, what's, uh, how you feel, Sue? <laughs> huh? What's... Um, four. No, I mean, I'm just, you're going to have to say it first, though. What are you... <laughs> what are you... <laughs> I've been hurt before. <laughs> We're expecting. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So... Uh, Expecting what? You're not going to set me up, okay? Um, a baby. A baby, yes, yes. By birth. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm just making sure you ain't setting me up. I did that one time. I was like, congratulations. The lady's like, for what? <laughs> but listen, this is a 100% true story. I said congratulations to this lady. She says, for what? But I was so confident she was pregnant. I said, on your pregnancy. <laughs> then she says, for real. She says, I'm not pregnant. She said, I have a big stomach and I walk funny. <laughs> I had no idea what to do after that. <laughs> it's a true story. You could tell it's not that funny at the end. <laughs> so what'd you say your name was again? Sue. Sue. Awesome. What do you do, Sue? I'm a stay-at-home wife. A stay-at-home wife and probably going to be a stay-at-home mom in the future. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, as a stay-at-home wife, do you actually stay at home? Because some, <laughs> some of them don't. I'm just saying. Be... <laughs> One man come home like, where is dinner? <laughs> stay-at-home wife is gone. <laughs> awesome. That's your husband right there? Cool, that's good, because if it's not, he's going to find out you guys are together. <laughs> that is awesome. How long have you guys been together? It'll be four years, the 29th. Wow, how do you know that, dude? <laughs> no, because most of the time you ask a guy how long you've been married, this is what the guy does automatically. <laughs> he can't be talking to me, but you knew. He was like, four years on the 29th. That's awesome. Dude, you happy? Yes, sir. Awesome. <laughs> She's all giggling. He's happy. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah, let me talk to the pretty little girl right here. Let me talk to the pretty little girl. Is it okay? You want to talk? Ah, oh, cool. She's so cute. What, what's your name? Mia. Mia? Wow, that's awesome. That name officially travels right now because <laughs> before you, it didn't. I got to be real with you. <laughs> Mia. How old are you, Mia? Six. Wow, that's awesome. And about to turn seven this November. Wow. <laughs> she just outdid you, dude. You thought she knew some stuff. <laughs> wow. So what grade are you in? Um, first. First grade. Cool. You going to do it again? I did that a couple times. You want to try it again? Or... <laughs> no? Okay. okay. You can do it that way if you want. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> little Mia. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Are you having a good time, Mia? Uh-huh. Have you been to a comedy show before, Mia? Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> Are those your parents next to you? Uh-huh. Awesome. Which one you like the best? <laughs> 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 Don't answer that, Mia. Don't answer it. <laughs> Don't even make eye contact with them, Mia. <laughs> you are awesome. Mia's all pretty and stuff. All right, so break time is running a little long. You got any questions for me, Mia? Uh-uh. You sure? Uh-huh. All right, so this is what we're going to do. It's a two-minute window. You're going to ask me any question you want, any question at all. Here are the rules. You have to say 
Michael Jr., I was wondering. And I'll give you an answer, a response, a reaction. Some comedy could be created on the spot. <laughs> With that being said, the window is open now. Any question at all, just raise your hand. We'll bring your mic. It'll be awesome. Yo, my man right here in the green got a question. Are you, you, you're running too, right? You, you, okay, there's some hands up. You want to get them? All right, cool. No. Um, what's your whoa, favorite? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the rules are simple. It's Michael Jr. I was, go ahead. Michael Jr., I was wondering what's your favorite joke? My favorite joke, it's not even a joke, it really happened. My son, four years old, looks at me out of nowhere. He says, Dad, I want to be a doctor. I was like, yes, yes. Then he said, or a dinosaur. It's <laughs> my favorite right there. It's kind of All right, my man in the back, what's your name? Wyatt. Wyatt? That's an awesome name. Doesn't trap him. Ain't no black Wyatt. Sounds too much like white. <laughs> I'm just saying. Nobody is the black Wyatt. Make up your mind. Awesome, Wyatt. What's your question? Hey, Michael Jr. I was wondering, do you like to dance? Wow. Let me think about that. You want me to do a dance for you? That's what you're looking for, little I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> Sit your little Wyatt self down somewhere. How about that? <laughs> All right, we, we got to give him some free stuff or something, because he was hilarious. <laughs> yes, awesome. Let's not ask any adults, apparently. You're, what's your name? Olivia. What is it? Olivia. Olivia. Your name travels. <laughs> All right, what's your question, Olivia? Michael Jr., I was wondering, why'd the chicken cross the road? <laughs> that is so racist. I can't believe she asked me that. That is amazing. That is kind of racist. That is amazing. <laughs> Do the same. All right, great time. Bro. You ever hear somebody tell you an amazing story how they, about how they almost got killed? I know it sounds like it's a skirt in Ireland, but that's how black people say it. Killed, you know, man, if I would have turned this way, man, I would have got killed. <laughs> but something told me to go the other way. I didn't want to be a Christian either for a long time because some Christians are creepy. <laughs> There's some creepy Christians. It's creepy everything. It's creepy Muslims, but some Christians is creepy. You ever had somebody, they talk about God and they voice change all of a sudden? Like, yo, man, how you doing? I'm cool. Can I tell you about the Lord? What is wrong with your voice? <laughs> your voice. Or somebody start praying in the middle of your conversation. You was just having a conversation. Yo, you see the game? That was a good game. Man, that game was a good God. We just thank you for being so holy, Lord. You're so awesome. I'm like, are we praying right now? You are creepy. Before I became a Christian, I, mean, used to, I would ask a girl out, and this, this one girl, I remember, she said to me, she said, I'm dating Jesus. I didn't know what that meant. Now I realize she was just saying she wanted to get closer to God before she started dating. Back then, I had no idea. I thought she was dating Jesus. <laughs> a month later, she called me up and said, you still want to go out? I'm like, did you break up with Jesus? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know for sure, but I think it was your fault. Whatever happened, <laughs> it was your Now you're coming to me? You are confused. You better go back, I'm telling you. He forgives you for everything and you get free wine? You better call him. You better go call him. Because what if I'm the jealous type, right? I walk in the room, she praying. I'm like, who you talking to? Because you got different types of Christians. This is what I found out. You got Christians who are cool. You can hang around with them. Iron sharpen iron relationships, right? Then you got Christians who may have a little limp in their walk. They got the hat on, but the shoes don't match. <laughs> then you got Christians who, I'm just going to put this out there. You ever know somebody that was oversaved? 
Don't look at him. Don't look at him. <laughs> you can't even have a regular conversation with him. He's like, hey, man, I'm thirsty. You thirsty? Thirsty for the Lord. <laughs> thirsty for the Lord? Hey, I lost my keys. Could you help me find my keys? You need the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I didn't drive a kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> I drove a Toyota. I know as soon as I said oversave, some of y'all had somebody in mind, but if you didn't, somebody had you in mind. <laughs> you could be oversaved. You ain't know it. Now I got to let you know that you oversaved. A couple indicators to let you know you oversaved. Just a couple indicators. Um, if you don't mess around with computers because it got a cursor. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you rebuke vacuum cleaners, because it's a dirt devil. <laughs> I got an aunt that's oversaved. She messes up television shows for us. We're watching Extreme Makeover Home Edition. At the beginning of the show, they always tell you the sad story about the people. My aunt going to start praying for them. Lord, help them get a new house, Lord. Just... They're going to get a new house. They're going to get a new house. She's like, yes, you got to believe. I'm like, no, you got to have cable is what you got to do. You are messing up the program right now. I like reading the Bible. I was reading the Bible. Found out, uh, found out Jesus had a little brother. Anybody know his name? James. When I read that, I was like, Phew. How much pressure was that? <laughs> Jesus, your big brother? How many times did you have to hear, why come you can't be more like Jesus, James? Because <laughs> you know, everybody probably thought that James could do the same thing Jesus could do, but he couldn't. He was just James. He wasn't James Christ. <laughs> Remember the wedding banquet? Jesus turned water into wine. Everybody was amazed, but they don't tell you about the next banquet. Jesus left early. They started running out of wine. Everybody looked at James. <laughs> it's like, man, last time this happened, your brother made some wine, dude. You, you just going to stand there with your sandals on? You're not going <laughs> to make some Kool-Aid or something, man? You're not going to do anything? <sighs> you know, James had problems just like any other kid had problems. He would try to follow his big brother around. So everywhere Jesus went, James followed him. That's what little brothers do. So if Jesus went there, so did James. I bet one time, James almost drowned. <laughs> oh, you just got that joke just now, didn't you? <laughs> Jesus walked on water and then James tried to do this one. I'm sure James had problems. He would go to his parents with his problems. And his parents, especially his, his mom, was trying to throw him a bone once in a while. They'd pray over their food. They'd be like, Lord, we just thank you for this food. In James' name. <laughs> James had problems. He would go to his parents with his problems. And you know what they would say? He'd be like, well, what would Jesus do? You know? Then they gave him a bracelet. They gave him a bracelet. And um, <laughs> then he started selling those bracelets. You know? <laughs> Made some money selling bracelets. What would be cool is a what would James do bracelet, right? Same initials, different meaning. <laughs> Completely different meaning. You're driving down the street, you get cut off in traffic. You fuss him out, your pastor gonna be like, yo, you got a what would Jesus do bracelet on? Like, uh uh, that's what would James do. <laughs> driving an imaginary car for a long time, isn't he? <laughs> also found out when Jesus was 12 years old, Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. 
they lost Jesus. And you know the first thing they had to do was pray. I wonder what that prayer must have sounded like. Joseph probably did the prayer. He was like, oh, God. <laughs> Dear God, um, oh, forgiving God. Um, you remember that Messiah you gave us? You got another one somewhere, man? We don't... That was the only begotten son? Okay, we're going to find him. We're going to find him. We're going to find him. I was reading, I wanted to know about the blessings of Abraham, so I'm reading the Bible, it's like Genesis, and one of the things that blessing about Abraham was the obedience of his household. His name used to be Abram, and one day God told him to change his name. God changed his name and told him to go home and circumcise his entire household. Even the servants... The Bible said he went home that same day and did it. That is obedience. Because I don't know if I could have been a servant. I'm just saying I had a couple questions first. Like, wait, what, what, what happened? What happened? You changed your name? I don't think I know you then. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Okay, okay. Can we just talk for a second? Can we just talk? Okay. Can you stop sharpening that rock while we talk, though? It's, it's distracting. It's distracting a little bit. I'm trying to focus. I'm trying to focus. Okay. What exactly did God say? His words, please. Okay. Circumcised in the flesh of the foreskin. You sure I didn't say your skin? Go back up there and check, man. Come back with a note. <laughs> and then going to church can be a little intimidating sometimes. Like you're trying to look for the right church. You'll never find the perfect church. So you just stop looking for the perfect church because you ain't perfect. But I went to one church and uh, the pastor was like, I want you to pray with your neighbor. I'm like, my neighbor don't go to this church. You want me to call my neighbor on the phone? That's creepy. <laughs> so they explained to me, your neighbor is the person next to you. I'm supposed to pray with some lady I don't even know? What I'm supposed to pray about? Lord, help them hairs and stop growing on this lady's chin, Lord. I don't... <laughs> what am I supposed to pray about? I don't even know her. <laughs> if she went first, man, she must have been John the Baptist's auntie or something, man. And she prayed all good. She was like, dear Heavenly Father, you said in your word in the sixth chapter, the third, third verse, Lord, of the book of Matthew, Lord, the 601st word on page 1297, Lord. Lord, you said, seek, search, Lord. You are the Alpha Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, the King of Kings. I'm thinking, man, she even know his nicknames. <laughs> now she's looking at me like it's my turn to pray. Well, I'm not going to let her out pray me. So I'm like, all right, dear God, God, I just, you, I just, I just can't fight this feeling anymore, Lord, you know, because I know, Lord, that nationwide, you're on my side, God, and because, because choosy moms choose Jesus, Lord, you know, as the rocket's red glare, Lord, again, proof to the night, I believe I can fly, Amen. Then I got baptized, man. I just want to go on record to say it's a little more on it when black people get baptized. Because we don't like water. I'm not going to say that all black people don't like water. I'm just going to say all the black people I know don't like water. I don't know what it is about the water. Invite a black person to your pool party. Some of you have done this before. What happened? They showed up with all their clothes on. Talk about, man, I'm just going to eat, man. I ain't getting in the water. We just don't like, I don't know what, I know what the black women is, the hair. Black women do not want to get their hair wet. You could rob a black woman with a squirt gun. Take it! Take it! 
just take it, just take it. <laughs> we, don't, we don't like water, we don't like water. Immediately, when I got baptized, first let me tell you how I learned how to swim. I'm fishing off a bridge in Michigan when I was a kid. I'm 11 years old, I'm fishing off a bridge. I love to fish, so I'm fishing off a bridge. The fish not biting, my dad comes over, he's like, they're not biting, are they? I was like, nope. He's like, well, let's have some fun. That's how I learned how to swim. <laughs> Fast forward, right? Like 10 years ago, I'm about to get baptized. I have not been submerged underwater since the bridge. <laughs> Standing in the water, dude gonna push me, right? I'm like, you know what? I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I'm not, I'm not ready yet. I ain't ready. Dude gonna push me again. I'm like, there's gonna be trouble in the water. Gonna be trouble in the water. Come on if you want to. Right? And I'm all creative. I'm like, wait a minute, it's a white dude he got on a white sheet? I don't know if this is right. Are you gonna let me up? Are you gonna let me up? This is not an eight-minute baptism. <laughs> and when they baptize you, what do they say? In the name of the Son, the Father, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> dunk you under the water. I'm reading the Bible that Jesus got baptized. I was like, well, what did they say to him? <laughs> there's like, there's like, you, your dad, and your best friend. <laughs> I was on a show at this club in Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, there's this club called the Comedy Magic Club. It's a very prestigious club. It's really hard for comedians to get into this club. Like every Sunday night, Jay Leno performs here. It's a really hard club to get into. So I'm brand new in town, and uh, this comedian named George Wallace takes me into the club. Now George Wallace, if you don't know who he is, my favorite George Wallace joke is he says he was in China and he bought a pair of shoes. And he looked at the bottom of them and it said, made right around the corner. I love George Wallace. George Wallace takes me into the club, and in the green room is Gary Shanley and Jay Leno, now George Wallace. I'm like, oh, snap. These are some soldiers in comedy. I'm just happy to be in the room with them, right? But your gift will make room for you. So I'm sitting there, and at the time, they're working on a joke. A football player had got hit in the eye with a flag. Anybody remember that? He got hit in the eye with a flag. And he was suing the league for like $400 million. Now, Jay Leno, George Wallace, and Gary Shanley are all working on a joke for Jay Leno's monologue for The Tonight Show, like the following week. I ain't saying nothing. I'm just happy to be in the room. Then it got quiet, and they looked at me. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> I was like, all right, so let me see if I got this right. He got hit in the eye with a flag. He lost his vision in one eye, and he's suing the league for $400 million. Um, he not going to see half of it. So not long after that, I'm headlining down at the club, right? Now, I headline there on a regular basis now. A little while back, I'm doing a show there, and right before I got on stage, God changed my mindset about comedy. When a comedian gets on stage, he wants to get what? Laughs. That's 100% true. That's exactly what I was about. God changed my mindset and said, don't go up there to get laughs from people. Go up there to give them an opportunity to laugh. So it changed everything. So I do my show. We have a great time. I leave. I'm outside, I'm talking to the people, they want autographs. Same thing every time I leave this club. But this time I look across the street and I saw a homeless guy. I had never seen a homeless guy outside this club before, ever. But that doesn't mean he wasn't there before. It just means that my mindset was to get laughter from people. So why would I even notice a homeless guy? Then I noticed him, I was like, yo, what about him? How could I give him an opportunity to laugh? And then God was like, you really want to know? And I was like, nope. Then I said, yes, you know, because I was getting on a plane the next day. Um, 
I said, yes, and we went and did a comedy tour like no other tour before. First place we went to was Fort Worth, Texas. There's a place here called... There's a place called the Samaritan House. The Samaritan House takes care of people who are homeless and they have HIV. We went in there, we did a comedy show for him, and then after the show, this guy walks up to me, and he wants to talk to me. Now, the facilitator already told me that this guy, I think his name was, his name was Steve, he's, he doesn't talk to anybody, but he wants to talk to me. I'm like, why do you want to talk to me? <laughs> and he goes on to tell me that until that night, he hadn't laughed in over 20 years. And I'm telling you, I almost start crying. I was like, you better back up. We leave there, we go to Montrose, Colorado, a place called the Dolphin House. The Dolphin House takes care of children who are being abused by their parents who are on drugs. And this grandmother tells me the story of her grandson. And um, she tells me about uh, how, he, how he's being abused by his mom. And one of the things she's doing is she's pulling out his toenails. And, he's, and then he ex she explains that uh, her gran the grandson is so afraid of his mom, everywhere he goes, he wears a Spider-Man costume. Everywhere he goes. I hear his story and I hear all these other kids' stories. And now they bring them all together and I got to do comedy for them. Only with God's strength was I able to get up on stage. So I get up there and I start doing comedy. Sitting right up front, Spider-Man, full costume. <laughs> I know his story and I got to do comedy. So I start doing comedy and an amazing thing happens when a room full of people start to laugh. You open up and reveal who you truly are. And I hear a voice come from this part of the room right here and the voice says, my name is Ronan. This little boy pulls off his mask and introduces himself to me. And he starts talking to me for like nine minutes like I'm not doing a comedy show. <laughs> he talked about Spider-Man, talked about Batman. He said, Batman has a belt. And I was like, well, I got a belt too if you don't sit down somewhere, right? It's <laughs> exactly what happened. The whole room laughed. In fact, it was the biggest laugh of the night. Now listen, I can guarantee you it was not in my notes to do a joke about whooping kids. in a room full of abused kids. <laughs> but that was a joke that needed to be done. God knew, and the, the elephant had to leave the room. We had an amazing time. We leave there, we go to Skid Row. A guy says to me, I've been homeless for seven years on crack cocaine for five years. I was beaten, stabbed, and left for dead. I could really use a laugh, Michael Jr. Same dude has to use his left hand to keep himself from falling out of a chair and laughter. We filmed the whole thing. We made a movie. It's called Comedy the Road Let's Travel. We go to one more location. We actually go to a youth prison. We go to an adult prison. The adult prison's not in the film, but I got to tell you what happens. Because it just shows you how God got your back when you step out there and do something he told you to do. So we go, we go ahead and we go to this adult prison, and I'm scared for real. I don't mind telling you. I, was, I walk in, the warden takes my belt. He's like, you can't have a belt. Somebody might try to hang you. I'm like, can't they just boo me or something? Why they gotta hang me? Because <laughs> there's a real dilemma going on right now. They can either hang me with my belt or I take the belt off and my pants is loose. There's some stuff going on in my head right now. I'm just telling you, I'm very creative. So I'm scared for real. And I need a joke immediately. I know, tonight I was all moving slow, comedy is like dating. Not in prison, nope. That analogy never came up. It never came up. I'm scared for real. Bars are opening in front of me. They're closing behind me. Open in front of me. I can't run. I'm scared for real. I got to be funny immediately. I got nothing. A joke popped in my mind. I was scared to say it. I was going to say, you know, you guys are a captive audience. You know, I just want to say that, you know. Um, but I was scared. I was scared. I walk in, sitting right up front is a white dude with a white beard named Moses. I was like, thanks, Lord. <laughs> I looked at Moses, and when I said these words, the place exploded in laughter. We had an amazing time. I looked at Moses. I said, Moses, this is what I want you to do. I want you to look the prison warden right in his eye. Look him right in his eye, and I want you to say, let my people go. Listen, I love you. I thank you so much. I'm Michael Jr. Thank you, thank you, thank you.